Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I'm a voice teacher. Today I'm going to be doing a sort of different style of video. I haven't really done any um, blog kind of things before, but I have been asked multiple times, how did you get into teaching voice? How did you become a voice teacher? What was your path with all of this? So I thought that it is time to talk about that. So, uh, excuse me for being bad at this other style of video, but um, I let's experiment. <laughs> So I grew up and my mom was very musical. She she didn't perform a ton. We would perform in church. Sometimes we would sing um, like duets together. Um, my grandma would sing. And I think that that's kind of where the family love of music came from because that generation, whenever they were together, they would like pull out a keyboard and they would get around it and harmonize with each other. And it, it kind of set up this expectation that it's okay to just mess around while you're making music. And even though everyone was pretty good, um, they they weren't afraid to sound bad with it. And I think that that, you know, set up a pretty good expectation for myself with other things with music. So that's kind of where it all started. And I took piano lessons when I was uh, eight or nine, and I did that for two years, and then I quit. And I really wish that I hadn't quit. But I did that, and then I um, started playing guitar in junior high. My guitar teacher would put together these combos. So he would have a piano player sometimes and a bass player and a guitar player and a drummer and a, no one wanted to sing. Like that's the thing is no one in other than me was considered themselves at all able to sing. So I was put as the singer for all of those groups. And that was kind of my first real performance experience. And uh, I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. I hadn't even really been in choir at that point, but I was doing that a lot. I did that for two or three years, and that kind of kick-started like, oh, I, I'm a good singer, I like to sing. But up until then, I hadn't had any voice lessons. And then uh, I started doing choir in 10th grade, and then I changed to a different school in 11th grade, and um, I was doing choir again, and people just started kind of looking at me a little differently. Like, I, I remember warming up, um, it's a choir of like over 100 people, and when we were warming up, this girl on the front row like looked back because I was singing with vibrato, and I was like, this is weird. That's when my voice started, I think, making me stand out in different ways. And uh, through that year, I had never been in a musical, well, I had done like one Harry Potter versus uh, the Wizard of Oz thing, but I wasn't like actually in it. Anyway, I had never done a musical, but all of the girls who I thought were very cute uh, were like, Sam, you should audition for musical. So I auditioned for the musical and they were doing Les Miserables and I got cast as Jean Valjean and um, I needed to prepare for it quickly. And this was also at about the time that David Archuleta was on American Idol. And I was at my house and we, my mom and I were watching American Idol. And then um, a family friend came over and was like, oh, I know his voice teacher. And he told me about Dean Kalin. So I went and signed up for a lesson with Dean Kalin. He was like, I, I feel like we made a lot of progress, but he suggested that I start taking from someone who's a little bit closer to me and a little bit less expensive. So he recommended that I went and worked with Terry Stock. And so I started taking lessons from Terry and we started preparing Jean Valjean. A lot of it was like, okay, this is your first real set of voice lessons with someone who's focused on technique. We need to build up a lot of different habits because I had some innate talent, but I wasn't like doing a lot of things in a way that made singing really easy. But as she did that, she, she told me one day, she was like, I think that you're gonna be a teacher someday, so I'm going to teach you how to teach. And it started with just talking about vowel changes. So it's like, do you hear this vowel? Let's make a little adjustment, let's narrow this vowel, and then suddenly it's significantly easier to sing. So I was in high school still, working with Terry, and then I started helping my friends. Like, uh, some people started asking me like, hey, what would you do on this? And I would give them a vowel narrowing where I would just be like, try it a little bit different like this. And they would do it, and sometimes it was a lot easier and sometimes it wasn't, but at least it got me experimenting with voices and learning how to talk to singers. And then while we were performing Les Miserables, someone who was in it had a father who was a donor or something to, um, to the University of Utah School of Music, 
And he was asking me like what I wanted to do. Did I want to go into music? Did I want to do whatever? And I wasn't really sure completely at that point. I, I think that I just thought that I was going to be like a, a coder or a doctor, but I, I was I did not have a lot of foresight. And I was like, yeah, actually, like being a singer sounds great. So I auditioned for the U and I got scholarshiped in, which felt kind of like I was being recruited like an athlete because I did not have good grades. Um, I struggled a lot during high school with depression and anxiety. And that's something that still comes back and bites me often. It's as anyone who deals with mental illness, which I think is a lot of people now, especially of my generation and the generations coming up. It's not something that like completely goes away, but it's something that I've gotten a lot better at managing. So I didn't do very well in high school, but I got uh, I got into school, into college, and then I went and it wasn't for me. Um, I It just was not a good experience for me. I wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't in the right mental space. So I ended up dropping out of school during my first semester and um, I took some time off and I uh, I did some community theater and I still kept taking lessons from Terry and from Dean every once in a while. I just kept immersing myself in the world of voice. Then eventually, like, I, I went back to school and I was like, I want to go be a doctor this time. Like, that's what I want to do because my mom was a nurse and I grew up watching a lot of ER and Grey's Anatomy. And I was like, I want to be a doctor. It's just what I'm going to do. And then I started volunteering up at a Primary Children's Hospital. And that was an incredible experience. But it's put me next to people who were also wanting to be doctors, but were way better at school than I was and had a much better work ethic than I had, to be honest. And I saw them them working so hard and I'm like, I'm not, I this isn't for me anymore. I work really hard, but like, it's just a different path. So I was like, I guess I'm not going to be a doctor anymore. Uh, maybe I want to be a lawyer. And I, I kept going to school a little bit. I, I transferred over to a community college, which I wish that I had started with because I was able to be like choir president. I was able to do all a lot of things and have all these experiences that I would not have had at a at a bigger university. And so I uh, went there and I started taking all of their music classes. And I had heard that if you want to be a lawyer, like you don't, it doesn't really matter what you get your undergrad in. Um, but that a lot of law schools like music majors. They like people who studied music because it's, it gives them some diversity. Um, and also music is kind of a difficult major, like with music theory and everything. It's, it's a lot harder than people give it credit. And so I was med majoring in music and, um, still thinking like, I want to be president, I want to be a lawyer so that I can go be president someday. Then I got a job. Dean actually sent me a email. He was like, they are looking for some new teachers to come over and take on their excess teaching load. So I applied for it and I was extremely lucky because I got the job. And up till then, like I had still been messing around with teaching. I had been playing, I had been teaching, you know, two or three students, but I wasn't doing anything full time. I was I was a full time student myself and taking a lot of voice lessons and just teaching when I when people would let me and charging very, very little. Uh, I think I was charging like 15 bucks for a lesson. It was still enough to get me comfortable with the process of teaching someone. So when the studio in Hong Kong was interviewing me, I had to teach in front of them and I was able to get through well enough. And so I got that job and then I moved over to Hong Kong for 18 months. That was the first time that I didn't have to worry about recruitment. I didn't have to worry about doing assignments for school. I didn't have to worry about other money things, which was on my mind forever. And it just took away all of that anxiety about money and about other things because I had a job. Through that, I was able to just focus on teaching. I was able to focus on learning. I was reading a lot of books. I was watching a lot of conference videos of better teachers, experienced teachers, um, talking about how to teach. So I, got, I came back uh, from Hong Kong after some visa problems. And then I went back to the community college and finished up there. It took me so long in college. And I think that's something that a lot of people are afraid to admit and afraid to talk about. But it took me, you know, eight years before I graduated with my bachelor's degree. And um, I had a lot of other experiences through that, but you know, it took me a lot longer.
than most people. But I also wouldn't be here without that, without all of those other experiences. So I think that sometimes I kind of get down on myself for like, well, I would, I wish I could have done it all a little bit different, but I don't. Like, I needed to go through all of that to learn how to deal with my brain, to learn how to deal with my process for everything, and also to just improve as a singer so that I could get to where I am now. So after I came back from Hong Kong, I was uh, at the community college again, and I didn't end up actually getting an associate's, but I was really, really close. And in Utah, you could transfer all of that stuff over to a big university. And so I uh, applied at Westminster College because I had a few lessons with one of the classical teachers there and the the lessons first started well. And so I was like, yes, I wanna go here and they scholarshiped me and it was it was fantastic. So I started there and overall it was great. Like it was such a good experience. It was small class sizes, which is the same sort of thing that I was looking for at the community college and that made me kind of stand out at the community college. And I was old at the time. I mean, comparatively, I was 25 and, um, you know, I was in school with a bunch of 18 to 20 year olds. And so just that maturity, like you, you change a lot between 20 and 25. And so I was also kind of standing out in different ways there. And I had been through enough of the uh, music theory classes that I was no longer so bad at music theory that I would just fail. But it was that determination. It's like, I, I failed a lot. And I think it's part of it. Like you have to fail a lot to get somewhere. So I was, I was there, I was taking voice lessons from a classical teacher who things started well, but then as things went on, like I just was not progressing in the way that I wanted to and things felt really, really bad. And we kind of had a falling out as I've had with a handful of teachers at this point. And um, it was not good. And then I bounced around studios a little bit and then I ended up finding Mark Reynolds who has been on this channel a few times and he's this fantastic, uh, fantastic teacher. He just kind of changed how I looked at teaching singing. Before that, I was much more focused on just the vocal technique. And I was really good at fixing vocal technique, I think. I could hear things quite well. Um, I, I'm smart enough that I was able to deduce what was happening. I had been educated enough that I could, you know, come up with some good exercises, but I wasn't treating the whole person in the way that I try to now. And so much of that was from Mark Reynolds. Like there was a time that I I had a terrible day, um, things were not good, and I just broke down in one of his lessons and he just like led me through a guided meditation and uh, made me feel safe and it was fantastic. And I was teaching, I, uh, I was trying to find students on like Thumbtack and on through word of mouth, but I, I only had a handful of students with that. So I was also driving Lyft and Uber while I was in school and finishing up school, but I, I didn't have that full studio in the way that I would dream. So I finished school and um, my girlfriend who I met at school up there was wanting to go into uh, a master's program. So we decided to move down to uh, Phoenix, to Arizona from Salt Lake City and um, moved down there and I was driving Lyft and Uber, but it was very, very, very slow and I, had kind of a plan for over the next two years, I was gonna get a full studio. And um, I, I had to work on Facebook advertising and on advertising in this and on building myself in the community and on all of these things to kind of build the studio. And that was the plan. But Lyft and Uber were just really, really slow. It was the summertime in Phoenix, people weren't going outside. So I had a fire under my butt. I needed to get voice students. One of my friends, my editor, she saw that Tristan was starting to do really well, that Tristan Paredes was doing well on YouTube and he was making um, voice teacher reacts videos. I'm like, cool, I'll go watch them. And I watched them and I thought that Tristan was like super entertaining. I would just watch them casually for a while and I, I didn't even think that I was gonna do something. Um, but then she was, my friend was like, you should do some of this stuff. And when she said that, I was like, yeah, I think I could bring a different perspective. I'm a different person, I have different experiences. And it was still, such a kind of new niche on YouTube that it wasn't super saturated. And so I started making those videos. Because I had all of the training that I had had, because I had been teaching on and off for like eight years at that point, full time for a few years and part time for most of the rest of the time, because I had all those experiences and I had kind of grown up on the internet and I just understood the internet in different ways than most voice teachers 
understand the internet. Everything came together. And I'm so thankful that you guys watched my videos and that you find some value in these videos. And then I was a, I put together a quick website and um, people started booking me. And then within a few months, I was totally full. And it's been amazing being able to be a full-time teacher like that. So that's kind of my journey of how I became a voice teacher. I started just by singing a lot. I kind of got some attention for it. People decided they were going to take me under their wing and teach me how to teach. I put in the the work, I practiced a lot. That's been one of the most consistent things in the last 15 years for me is I would sing a lot. I would practice my singing. I would practice playing my piano scales. I would practice teaching with whoever would let me do it. Uh, whoever was willing to pay me $10, $15, n no dollars sometimes. Um, I just got those repetitions in. And I do think that my background in instruments and having a little bit of background in piano and uh, being able to play a little bit of guitar kind of helped my ear. And so I do think that that's something that's necessary for most teachers to go through is learn another instrument, especially piano, because voice lessons are conducted over the piano 99% of the time. Um, and if you're not able to at least play through some scales, then you're not going to be able to teach at as high of a level as I think that you sh should be if you're teaching. So like in high school, after Terry told me that she thought I'd be a teacher, I just sat down at a, I had a old keyboard um, uh, and I just learned how to do this. And I just like stumble through it. Sometimes I'd go, whatever, I'd, I'd mess it up. And um, just by ear, I kind of taught myself the pattern of how to do this. And then I would change key and just keep going because that's what my teachers did. Um, and I'm like, well, that's a very necessary skill for teaching voice. So I taught myself how to play through all of those exercise patterns. And once I got that, then I was able to start practicing in front of actual people. I was able to ask some of my friends, hey, can can you help me practice teaching? And they were nice and they did it. And it wasn't always awesome, but I did it. And you just need to get that experience. And I was continuously wanting to learn more. I would read forums. I would try lessons with a lot of different teachers. I would do Brett Manning's Singing Success. I would do... Uh, I would watch YouTube videos back when YouTube was just starting. All of these things kind of filled in my education. So if you love to sing and you want to help others be better at singing, consider being a voice teacher. Like you don't have to do it as a full-time gig in order to make an impact in someone's life and in order to get better at doing it. You just need to have a structure of how to do it and um, practice. And as long as you set up this idea that the most important thing is to do no harm and you're constantly checking in with your students of like, how does that feel? Do you notice anything? Um, and you have the structure and a little bit of base skill. I think it can be a really lovely way to practice uh, to practice your own singing because when you're listening to other people, you listen in a different way than when you're practicing on your own. And um, I think it's a really good way to find what things you need to improve in your own voice. So the first thing that I recommend to anyone who wants to become a voice teacher is start taking lessons. Find a teacher who is uh, who has students that you like. Um, find a teacher who works well with you. And the only way you can really know is by trying some trial lessons with multiple teachers so that you can find out who fits really well with you. Um, that's where... IvTom, I think, is such a good resource because it's a community of well-trained teachers and you can kind of jump around between them and recognize that everyone has a very similar goal in their teaching. They just might have a different way of getting you there. So they have a directory on the website that shows a bunch of different teachers and I would suggest just starting some lessons with that. In addition to that, Dean Kalin actually wrote a book. It's called Teaching Good Singing, which is a straightforward guide on how to structure your lessons and how to choose good exercises and how to teach good singing. So I would go get that. It's available as a PDF on his website. And then consider joining an organization. You could join IvTom. IvTom is a really great way to continue your education or to just start it. And right now there's a really good opportunity to join IvTom or to at least get some of the uh, education that they offer. So IvTom has a yearly conference where they have fantastic presenters, doctors, voice teachers. Um, they, they get 
a huge variety of presenters to come and uh, speak. And there's there's teaching demonstrations and it's it's really, really good. So this year, because of the world, we are doing the conference online. It's entirely online and it is on November 13th, 14th and 15th. So it's just next week. This year we have some fantastic speakers. Uh, Melissa Cross, the queen of Scream, is talking about four different ways to scream. Mark Baxter, who is one of my first teachers to teach me online, um, and prove that teaching online can be a really valuable skill is presenting. Um, he's incredible. He's worked with fantastic professional singers um, like Steven Tyler and others. Dean Kalin is going to be presenting as he always does and he's fantastic. And then Dr. Ingo Tietze, who's like the patron saint of singing through straws. He's one of the top voice scientists in the world is going to be presenting. It's incredible. And also I'm going to be presenting, which is terrifying because I've never presented at a conference. And to see my name between Matt Edwards and Dean Kalin and just under Melissa, like it's it's kind of overwhelming, but I'm going to be talking about how to uh, strategies for teaching voice online. And I feel like that's something that I am very, very experienced with at this point. And I'm happy to share more of my story and more of uh, how to actually put this stuff together, how to teach. If you are interested in learning more about the voice, if you are interested in teaching, if you already are a teacher, or if it's something that you aspire to do, please register for this conference. There's a link in the description. And then in addition to that, you can also purchase videos from the last two years, from the 2018 or 2019 conferences. So I highly recommend going and registering for this year's conference. Come watch me, come uh, ask some questions uh, while you're at it. So yeah, that's how I became a teacher. And I think that most people who love singing and have a desire to learn to teach, can learn to do it. It is a skill that you can work on. You just gotta start. So I hope that you do. Thank you for watching.